This is John Ricard. You're watching On Set with John Ricard. And what we have here today is the Nikon D3X. This came out in December of 2008. It's something we were waiting for for a long time from Nikon, a high-resolution full-frame camera. Canon had this for several years, but Nikon just put this out. Very expensive, $8,000. A lot of people complaining about the price because it's basically the same as a D3, just a different chip. So people say, well, why is it $3,000 more for just a chip? I don't know. I thought it was expensive, but I bought it anyway. So let's see what we have in the box, okay? First, they give you a camera strap. Now, I never liked these straps, and I'm actually surprised that so many people use them. I see a lot of pros use these straps, and a lot of amateurs as well. I think it's really gaudy, and it's very ugly. And to me, it's like if you have a top-of-the-line camera like a D3, and you wear a strap that says Nikon D3X, it looks like you're trying to show off, like, I've got the top-of-the-line camera, so I can't really see wearing it. And then if you've got a bottom end camera, something like a D40 that's just a few hundred bucks, then it looks really silly to be walking around bragging like I've got a D40. So to me, no matter what camera you have, the strap looks really silly, but I see a ton of guys using these straps. I think it's too thick and I think it's too short also. I'm going to show you the strap that I like later on with a model. Okay. Next, we have uh, our instruction book here, and I see there's a CD here which I can only assume is some type of Nikon software. Now, I used to use Nikon View at one time, and at the time I changed to using Photo Mechanic instead to do things like make web galleries or rename pictures or move pictures around. And I think it's a much better program than Nikon View. This just says Software Suite. It might be Capture NX, which is another program I don't like. At one time I was using Nikon Capture, but I found the program to be kind of unstable. It would crash a lot. And they had one feature I like called the multi-image window, but Lightroom has the same thing. It's a feature where you can process like a thousand pictures very quickly. You can see them all and make image adjustments and do what you need to do in a very quick way. And I think Adobe Lightroom is a much better program. So I don't really use that. Then we have here an instruction book. These are usually pretty good from Nikon. There's a guy named Tom Hogan, who I think makes a far superior book. It'll cost you about $50, but it's probably the best $50 you'll get, ever spend. He gives you a manual and a CD. The CD has a lot more than his manual, but you put the two together, there's a lot of information on it. It goes into much more detail than this. But the Nikon books, I think, are pretty good. So we've gotten rid of the little top part here. Take this off. And we see what looks like a USB cord. Every product you buy comes with one of those, so you probably don't need that. We've got a video cable if you want to connect the camera to a TV. A little protective cover here. And let's see what's in here before we get to the actual camera itself. This is a really nice charger. It looks just like the one that came with the D3. You can charge two batteries at the same time. You can also refresh or calibrate the battery. The Nikon cameras are great because they tell you exactly when you need to refresh the battery and it also tells you how much life you have left in the battery. So when it's time to replace the battery, the camera is going to tell you, hey, the battery is running out of juice. It's at the end of its life. You need to change it. So I like this a lot. And as we get further down, here's the actual battery. And again, it's the same battery that you use on a D3. They come with these little covers. I toss these out. I've never been able to carry the battery with that. Never had a problem carrying this in my pocket or my camera bag, just like this. And last inside of our case here, we've got the actual camera, our Nikon D3X body. So here it is from the front. And here's our back. As you'll notice, it looks a whole lot like a Nikon D3, okay? Basically identical camera. Only difference really is the chip. I was hoping that they would make a few minor changes, like I think the live view feature could be improved. I think that would have been nice. I think it would have been nice if they could have spread the focus points out a little bit more. Also, kind of right now, they're kind of all clustered in the middle, but they didn't make those changes. All they really did was change the chip. So I'm going to show you the kind of camera strap that I like, and then we're going to take some pictures. Debbie is going to demonstrate the type of camera strap that I like to use. So Debbie has two cameras on now. On her left, she has a D3, which is using the strap that I like. It's a Domke swivel strap, one inch. I think they call it a gripper, and it's the one inch version. And on her right side, she has the D3X, which is being supported by the D3X strap that comes with the camera. So the first thing we want to notice is, let's move the D3 to where the D3X is, please. 
So the strap I like is a little bit longer. And I'm not exactly sure why, but I find that that is very useful to have the camera to hang really low like this. Somehow it's just easier to get it out of your way. If you have a big heavy lens on or if you're carrying two cameras, you can get it out of the way better if it's longer. I find that these straps that come with the cameras over here are just a little bit too short. Now a second thing I like about this donkey strap, let's switch to D3 back please, Debbie. Is that you can swivel the camera. So Debbie, show us how we swivel this D3 camera. Now I'm not sure how I end up swiveling my camera in the course of shooting, but if she were to keep doing this, let's do it about three more times. If she were to keep turning the camera around like this, it really would not affect her. That's good. So let's let that hang for a second. Now you see the camera's not really twisted up. There's a little small twist there, but the camera's basically fine. Let's swivel the D3X now. Now as she swivels this camera, you notice the strap gets really tangled up. Now again, I don't know, that's good, you can let that hang. I don't know how I end up twisting the camera in the course of shooting, but somehow I find it is very useful to be able to have a camera that if it were to twist around, it doesn't get all tangled up like that. And this little swivel feature here on the Domkey strap allows the camera to rotate without it getting tangled. Another thing I like about the Domkey strap is that you can disconnect the strap. So sometimes I find myself in a situation where, let's say I was shooting the way she is now, and I'm just wearing a t-shirt and jeans, and I need to put my coat on. You can put the coat on right over the strap and go wherever you're trying to go quickly and you can leave the camera like this now when you want to disconnect the camera to get it from inside the coat go you can just disconnect the strap pull it out here she's going to reconnect it and now she can move the camera to her outside and again this is a feature that it, it's hard to explain why this is useful but I do find it useful to be able to put on a coat and then remove the camera from inside the coat. Also, if your cameras ever get tangled up because you're wearing two cameras or even three, it's very easy to disconnect them. All right, ready to do some shots, Debbie? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. So now we're ready to shoot. We put Debbie over here near a wall. She's holding a light meter. This is my old Siconic light meter. I used to use this on every shoot when I was doing film, and I've kind of gone, kind of gone back to it now in the last year or so. So we're doing some light checks using a pocket wizard here to trigger the light behind me, and I'm reading an 8.5 for ISO 100 with a shutter speed of 160. So even though the light meter is giving me 8.5, I'm going to shoot this at 11 because I did some testing before I ran this clip and it looked better at f11. She's being lit by an Ellen Chrome Octabank. It's just one light, but it's a large light, so it's very soft. And for the shot we're doing right now, which is just a simple headshot, it's going to be more than sufficient. Good. Smile there a little bit. Good. Go a little closer to the wall again. That's nice. Now, bring one shoulder forward like this. That's it. Good. Keep working those expressions. Work the eyes. Good. Fold the arms now. More time here. And then very small smile now. Good. Thank you for watching On the Set with John Ricard. My name is Debbie. You can find me on MySpace. Shorty underscore D. Bye.